I'm Nick, and this is my first attempt at a video for YouTube. Excuse the uh, wind. This is a uh, class of my Australian premium pilsner called DP Pilsner. And I'd like you to know, pretty nice clarity, beautifully tight packed head, very, very tiny bubbles, really nice, really hangs around. Pure beer. There's no finings, there's nothing being added, that's just how it ends up. Cheers, everyone. Mm -hmm. ah, I like that. Anyway, what follows is my first attempt at editing everything. I've never used this software before, I have no idea how it's going to turn out. But here goes. This is a day in the life of the DP Brewery with your host, Nick. Cheers. So hey everyone, uh, my name is Nick and I'd like to welcome you to DP Brewery. I've been promising myself to make one of these bits for you guys for some time and I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to make it over the next few weeks uh, since it's the camera part that's new to me, not the brewing. Brewing I've been doing 40 odd years, both commercially and at home. So. I hope you get something out of it. First of all, I'd like to just show you the brewery a little bit. I've got a few cylindrical conical vessels over here. Um, mash tun, kettle, and because I've become extremely lazy lately, I uh, invested recently in a 50 litre Braumeister, which I'm absolutely thrilled with. This system I built myself, and I tend to use mostly for ales now, and much heavier and stronger beers, because I find that the external electric rims is actually too slow to respond heat-wise and tends to caramelise the work. But in those styles, that's a fine thing. And the Braumeister now is almost exclusively pilsners, lagers, wheat beers and the like. Okay, this is how the brewery looks before we start for the day and uh, I'm going to switch off for a little while while I just tidy up. Okay, so brewing uh, day at the DP Brewery is well underway and I'm your host Nick, mostly a phantom brewer behind the camera as opposed to in front of it. The Braumeister over here to the right of your frame is currently heating up to 55 degrees, uh, mashing in temperature. I want to achieve somewhere around 50, I'm not too critical of that, and then back up to 55. Bit of a protein rest since I'm using a fair bit of raw wheat today. Um, over here I'm using the other brewery as you can see. Oh, look at that, 44.2. I didn't realise that uh, it wasn't going to film so easily. <laughs> but I'm using the rims heater on the main brewery to achieve um, 80 degrees, which allowing for 2 degrees loss when it transfers for sparging will be about 78. And that's the extra water lot. Not everyone with a Braumeister does that, but I certainly do. I get a much better efficiency. The control panel you see is one that I built about 8 months ago. And I have complete control of this brewery with these uh, PIDs and sensors. And as you can see, we're almost up at 45 degrees. And the idea of using the rims and the PID is that when it gets up to sparse temperature, I don't have to think about it or worry about it. I know for as long as I wait, it's going to be at the right temperature. Over here on the Braumeister, don't know whether we can actually see that. We're going to try, but I'm really keen on... Oh look at that, we're up at 40 degrees on our way to 55, so that's not bad at all. Alright, off the air again for a few minutes and back soon. Okay, so we're back on air again. I'm mostly not going to be in shot because that suits me better. As you can see we're just panning from the top of the bar here. And now we're finally set up for a proper brew day. Over there in the centre of the pitch you see the what they call the malt tube for the Braumeister. It's almost like a fancy brew in the bag and behind which is one of my cylindrical conical ale fermenters. Mash tun again insulated and up here we're using um, the kettle from the uh, ale brew house and I'm using that for hot water for sparging and also hot water for kettle top up. I'm making a fairly high gravity wheat beer today but it should end up at fairly low gravity so a lot of thinning out is required. I think we're starting out at about 105.6 or something and we need to come down to about 104.6, 104.8. Coming around the Braumeister has already been programmed and is currently heating up. The pumps are vented, everything's good. 
And we're also making use of the pumps on the main uh, brewery as well for doing our transfers. We'll be using the heat exchanger there as well uh, for cooling later on and aeration. And coming around the brewery a bit further, just uh, kegs, workbench, chemicals, uh, brew fridge. This is the one that, uh, which is set to operate at any temperature that we program. And I'm not sure about today's, but I think we're going to be running around 18 or 19. Um, as I say, starting from the other side of the brewery, of course, was the fabulous kegerator or keg fridge with uh, three kegs in it and two taps. Okay, that's all from me for a minute. We're just waiting for everything to heat up and we'll go back to the brewery. Cheers. We're heading back into the brewery now. We mashed in about 10 minutes ago at 55 and we're currently heading for 63 for 20 minutes. And this is the Braumeister in action. As you can see, the uh, work pumps in the Braumeister push the hot liquor up through the grain in the malt pipe and it just overflows gently. I don't know whether you can see it just coming off the side there. It overflows gently back into the Braumeister and recycles. I used to think these things were a bit over the top and probably not for a real serious home brewer or an ex-commercial brewer like myself, but actually it is the easiest, most simplest um, and most accurate brewing I've ever done and I've been producing fantastic beer since I bought this. It seriously is very good and worth the money. Being German made, the quality is also seriously good. There aren't any important parts on it and it works brilliantly. Okay, so there we go. And we'll be back soon to show you the difference between the colour of the um, initial mash and wort and how it is towards the end, which is remarkably different. So, uh, hi again folks, uh, back in the picture. We're almost at the end of the brew, went pretty well, all things considered, but I didn't make a mistake in the programming. And consequently, the uh, last mash stage, which would have been 10 or 15 minutes at 78, which um, helps get more unfermentable, more unfermentable, so no clearer word, um, in fact has gone for 30 minutes, uh, an error on my part. So it will be very interesting to see, I've not having done that before, whether the beer is still going to come out okay. I'm looking at it now, it is beautiful and clear. And I don't know whether you can see now, this is much, much clearer than before. Not so sure whether that's steaming up the lens or not. But it's certainly, uh, there we go, a lot clearer. However, the uh, rider on that, of course, is that it is a wheat beer. It does have raw wheat as well as, um, as, well as malted wheat and malted barley. And consequently is going to be subject to some haze regardless of how we process it. So okay what's happened now whilst uh, I've been off the air is that we have reached the end and it's time now to uh, drain the malt tube or the mash tun, whichever way you want to look at it and because of my age and infirmities I use a, an engine hoist as you can see here to block and tackle to get the uh, malt tube out in a, a 50 litre Braumeister like this one with a, a larger than normal grist or grain bill you are talking around about a total weight of around about 19 to 22 kilograms including absorbed liquor and grist and this is by far and away the easiest way to pull it out uh, if you watch other Braumeister videos mostly you'll see them being lifted out by very butch strong looking gentlemen but that ain't me anyway we're going to let it drain for a little while naturally uh, sitting on the edge there and uh, then shortly after that we'll sparge with depending on how much liquor's in there at the moment probably about 10 or 12 litres of liquor of water uh, to bring the total Braumeister kettle up to about 55 litres okay that's it for a minute and uh, just looking back over here the temperatures are looking good lots of liquor ready to go Okay, now where we've pretty well drained everything out of the uh, malt tube or the mash tun and uh, once again due to the fact that I don't like lifting or carrying with the aid of the block and everything on wheels or dollies, like the word dolly, uh, we're going to move the brewery out from under the uh, malt tube, pop in the waste bin, drop the malt tube in and pop the brewery back into place. So here goes.
pretty straightforward stuff really, albeit a little noisy. And of course one does have to be fairly careful here, as we are dealing with very hot, sticky things. See, there's a few drops still coming out, but certainly nothing of any major significance, and certainly nothing that can't be rinsed with a hose after. joints and muscles. And here's my favourite ever radio. Based on those that were around 50, 60 years ago in Britain. Just sensational. Hey again folks, as I said we're pretty well at the end of the brew now. I should have taken a bit more footage as we went, but I've not really done this before and when it comes down to it, when all said and done, my most, oh, my greatest priority is making sure I don't stuff up the beer. And I find as I get older, that that's uh, more of a reality than not. So uh, if I did forget to film a few bits, so be it. We'll edit these two cameras together shortly and see how it comes out. If it's any good, hopefully, um, some of the people I already admire on YouTube in the brew channels. Glenn, Home Beer Brewery, Patrick, and Terpsico Kid, who uh, really not only makes me laugh, but is incredibly informative and absolutely fantastic uh, videos. So hopefully you guys will have a bit of an idea about what I'm doing in Australia. And this is the Deep Thing Brewery. And I guess, folks, this is what it's all about. Here is a freshly poured Pilsner from the old kegerator which I made around about six, seven weeks ago in the Braumeister. Beautiful beer. And I'll try and get close without... You'll see a beautiful, strong foam, extremely tiny bubbles. Very, very good. And I just did a wee top up there to show you what I mean. Stands up above the glass. Fantastic head and beautiful clarity. 100% natural. I don't use any fining or clarifying agents. That's it. Beer at home. Cheers, everyone. Until next time. <laughs>